Now, if you're anything like me, and you probably don't own a ritual deck that you've actually used to play the game, so... And given the ban list, you're probably stuck on uh, what deck to use because uh, none of your other decks are actually playable at all. So, here's some uh, cheap budget deck examples that you can use. Some involving rituals, uh, some not. Here's one of them. Uh, Megalith. So, this is the probably the main budget ritual deck that you can play which you know if you you probably do want to at least have one ritual deck available because there are probably going to be missions in the event that give you gems for ritual summoning and obviously if you just go in with a unga bunga deck that doesn't ritual summon you're not going to get all the gems from the event so this is uh, one option to use now the the downside of this deck is this is this is an extremely complicated and difficult deck to learn Especially if you've never touched this before. So basically, if you don't own this deck and you didn't play during an art festival, there's a good chance that you don't know what any of these cards do, which is... I understand it's, it's, it's rough. So after this, I'm going to include maybe a combo or two on what you want to do with this deck. I, again, I don't, I'm not a ritual player either. I'm, I'm just learning this deck on the fly too. So I'd, <laughs> you know, this, we, we can learn this together. But this is what a typical Megalith bet deck looks like. Obviously, we the, the extra deck we can't use at all because, you know, <laughs> uh, everything's banned. So, so don't, don't worry about the extra deck at the very least. And uh, Staples, there's like Ash Blossom and Maxi. It's, uh, or uh, Maxi, Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? The hell no. Yeah, uh, Ash Blossom and Called By, basically. And then you have the Megalith engine and you have an in, a small incantation engine. So the Megalith engine, uh, basically the the gimmick of the, all the Megalith ritual monsters is that they all ritual summon, they can all ritual summon other Megalith monsters from the deck. And when they, when the other ritual monster is special summoned, they gain effects. So Ophio is a monster searcher when, when you, if you ritual summon for Ophio, Using another Megalith monster, you get to add another Megalith monster from your deck. And Hagiv is a spell trap searcher, you get to add a Megalith spell trap, so you could get the field spell, the Megalith unformed for certain lines, and you have a Megalith in Merchants as a just a, con a call continuous call of a Honda, it's a nice follow up and everything, it's a free add. And Och is, uh, I believe. So the on on summon effect is you draw one and discard one. That's not the real relevant part. The more relevant part is that this and Fool are the two Megalith monsters that let you ritual summon during your opponent's turn. Since uh, Ophio and Hege say during your main phase, but Fool and Och just just say during the main phase periods, quick effect. So the idea is most of your setups, you're going to be using Fool or Arch to s ritual summon Bay 4 during your opponent's turn. Bay 4 is the the biggest, the main form of disruption for this deck, where if this card is ritual summon, you can target cards your opponent controls up to the number of ritual monsters with different names in your graveyard and destroy them, so you can pop like, what, 3 plus cards when you summon this. That's going to be your main Disruption, something Bay 4 out, and all, most of your lines are going to involve uh, accessing Bay 4 so that you can ritual summon it during your opponent's turn. And Arachon is just uh, another target, it's like targeting protection can come up sometimes, I suppose. And Phalag is just a... Phalag. It, it's just a big... It's it's just a big dude. If you need to get over stuff or like if you're going second, this is this card uh uh Megalith monsters or not not Megalith monsters actually just monsters you control just gain three hundred attack defense for each monster in your graveyard. So I believe this also stacks so you could possibly do lines where you get double Phalag out 
and then you get like 600 per ritual monster grave you can see how that gets big and that runs over that runs over blue eyes whatever chaos max dragon i'm saying it because they are running it that is a loner this event and to supplement these megalith monsters we're running uh, the chalice the incantation engine where uh pencil plume and chalice slime they're your main starters for your this engine where basically these two have effects where pencil can reveal a monster in your hand a special summon incantation from deck and ink chalice slime is like the the same thing as pencil plume except you just have to discard a card and usually you're gonna summon candle from deck and then candles will add you your inception which is the rituals spell and this is the how you usually start you want to start your plays since inception is the easiest way to just special summon a, a megalith ritual monster since well, the problem with the, these ritual megalith monsters is that you can't actually get them on the you have to get them on the field first in order to start your engine so these these big cards being ritual monsters is you can't just summon them willy nilly you actually have to you know ritual summon them properly so the easiest way is the inception tribute the candle that search inception and then just get the, your level four megalith monster on the field that way and then you can do your plays and talus mandra is uh well, so after you ritual summon using the incamp inception incantation engine you can actually the pencil plume or the chalice slime that you start your play with you then send them to the grave to add inception back from the your hand back from the grave to your hand and then you can you can special summon the second incantation monster from your deck when the second one you're gonna usually summon is talus mandra and talus mandra basically what talus mandra does is adds benton to your hand you all know what benton does right it adds any light fairy monster from your deck to your hand and a lot of times uh you don't actually normal summon to start your plays only really if you open manju so if you don't open manju then benton will actually just search you your manju that you can later on in your play and then you can just normal summon manju and then get another search and a lot of times uh there's a, a few options that you can search with manju manju usually if you're that long into your combo it gets you your second form of interruption your other ritual monster you want to summon during your opponent's turn so one option is okay, lore of the red this is one option where you, uh you you can ritual summon this and then this is basically whenever your opponent activates an effect you get to pop a, a monster and you get to pop a spell trap so it's like two pops every turn which is uh, pretty nice uh the other option that we're currently running here is shino baron peacock where if you ritual summon this and you you will often ritual summon this during your opponent's turn you can uh return up to three monster opponent controls to the hand but the reason you're running this is because uh the, of this one card here who lee of the Mikanko, because Mikanko is going to be a definitely going to be a play deck, and a lot of decks have don't have really have outs to a uh, Huli equipped with an equip spell. So Shino Baron doesn't target, so Shino Baron is an out to Huli in a pinch. So that's nice. It's also just big. It's three K, so it's whatever. And yeah, the rest of the cards then. Prep is obvious, this is a ritual deck, and unformed. It's uh, another way to get out to access your fool. Since uh the, the first effect, I I mean you can use it, but mainly you're gonna be using Megalith Unformed. The second effect to ritual summon a megalith from your deck in defense position. You you usually again you wanna summon fool because you need to exceed the monster. You need to tribute monsters that exceed the monster you want to ritual summon by twice. So if you just summon fool, you just have to sack any level four monster, which is which is easy. You have tons of level four monsters. If you want to 
ritual summon anything higher. Like if you want to su ritual summon an Ophir, you gotta sack a level eight level worth of monsters. And if you don't like hard act draw into one of these level eight monsters, then you have to sack two monsters to special summon a Megalo. Like you, you, you don't really want that. Do that. You usually want to summon full with unformed. And it's another way to start your plays. The yeah, Megalith Portal is part of your combo and it provides protection for your ritual monsters. And this deck should be if you get the full combo off, it, you should be favored against most decks since your full full combo you get to summon both Bay Four and your other ritual monster of choice, so like Peacock or World of Red. So you just get infinite pops and bounces during your opponent's turn, and then you usually kill them on the next turn. And Again, this deck is really cheap. You can see there's absolutely no necessary URs in this engine at all. There's like hardly even any SRs even. So I guess I'll show some combo lines with this deck since... Honestly, if you understood the combo lines based on just what I said in this deck profile, I'd be highly impressed. So obviously this deck is pretty free-flowing and the combos aren't always linear. So each hand you might be doing different things. But I figured I'd, I'd at least show a couple of test hands to see what this deck actually does and see some sequencing and what ideal end boards you want to end on. And this is one of the best hands in the deck where you have access to an incantation pencil plume or chalice line. And then you have access to a level four uh, megalith monster. So I'll get, I'll get Ophio since we have preparation of rice that represents a level for Megalith Monster. Now, you'll use Pencil Plume, reveal any monster, special summon itself, and then you're gonna special Candle from the deck. And then Candle is gonna add to your Incantation Inception. Next, you're gonna use Inception to special summon your uh, level 4. So, Ophiel is the one we open. You can either have Ophiel or Hagif to do this line of play. So Ophiel is going to add full. And then Ophiel is going to use itself. It's going to special full using itself as the entire tribute. And then full effect will add back the Ophiel. And then full will become a, a level 4. Then you're going to use Incantation's Engrave Effect to send the Pencil Plume that you summon to Special Summon Talismander from deck. And then that will add the Inception back and then the Talismandra effect will uh, add you your side range of Benton. This is how you get access to Benton. Next, you'll use Megalith Fool's Effect to Special Summon Hagif from the deck. Since you started with Ophiel, you, now you want to access Hagif using Benton as the entire tribute. So that will summon Hagev, and Hagev will trigger and Benton will trigger. And Benton's gonna add you your light designated light fairy, which is gonna be a Manju. This combo does not involve a normal summon, so you can add Manju as your dedicated normal summon. And with this line, we already have everything you need, so you don't need Manju for any comboing, so Mon you can just normal summon Manju right now and search Shino Baron Peacock, which is a uh, uh, bounces three monsters when it's ritual summon. You're going to be adding this because you're going to be ritual summoning this during your opponent's turn. Okay, and then you don't have to worry about the Manju stuff until uh, later. Now you're going to activate Megalith Portal and you're going to use Incantation Inception to. Special summon the Ophiel that you just added back from the Fool. And you're going to use the uh, Talismandra as the tribute. Then Ophiel will trigger. And don't don't trigger Megalith Portal right now. You want to save this. You want to add back Agif for later on in the combo. So don't use, don't use Portal at this instance. But with Ophiel, you're going to add Arch from your deck. And now you're going to use Hegev's effect to special summon the ritual summon the Arch. 
And now you can uh, trigger Ancha's effect. This effect of Ancha doesn't really matter, it's just you just cycle the card. And then Megalith Portal is going to activate. And now you're going to add back your Hegif. So here's your Hegif. And Ach, you get to draw a card and oh well, we already know something, you don't need that mantra anymore. And with just these two card combos, uh, you with this hand you can actually do more. You can reserve the Ach on field by using one of your base for or your Fey Leg to just ritual summon your he your Hegev entirely since we have extra fodder. But if you don't want to use the extra stuff in your hand, and if you just want to keep this as a self-contained combo with just a level four plus pencil plume, here you will use Ach. To ritual summon Hagif again. And then when Hagif is summoned, again, this that when their effects to search when summoned is apparently not out March runs return, so thanks, thank you for that design, Konami. And now Hagif will add you your Megalith Emergence. And then set this. And this is your setup. So during the opponent's turn, right? Uh, wait for them to do something. Okay. Okay. Uh, you During your main phase, you can use Fool's Effect to Ritual Summon from deck. So you're going to use Fool to Ritual Summon Baythor from your deck. And you're going to be using... Using... Any necessary monsters as material. This feeder we can use Manju since it's free, then you're always gonna have Manju. And you can use uh the either the Hegif or Ophiel on the field as well. So here summon Bay 4 and you're gonna pop infinite cards. Okay, you can pop it. One, two, one, two, and pop. And then Megalith Portal is going to work activate and you can add back the Ben 10 to your hand. So there's your Bay 4 pop. Pop at least two if not more. See if they want to do anything else. Okay, and then Megalith Emergence. You're going to use this to special summon back the Arch. Again you, again, you can use Och to cycle a card. Or, you're gonna use Och's effect. Sorry, not the cycle effect. You're gonna use Och's effect during your, the main phase as well during your opponent's turn to ritual summon a ritual monster from your hand. So, because we search Sharon Baron, Shino Baron Peacock, you can special summon Shino Baron Peacock using Benton and Och as the material. And then when Shino Baron Peacock summons, it will bounce three cards, non-targeting. So that also outs Huli and other random random stuff. And then Benton that you add it back off the portable trigger, and then you can add your third Manju for follow-up. Cat dance, okay. Oh oh no, 100 damage. Oh no. Oh by the way, Megalith Portal has a protection effect. Just just F FYI. If if, if you didn't we didn't already do enough. It protects your Megalith monsters, each one by battle. So yeah, this that's the ideal, the most ideal end board you could hope to expect, uh, usually, with playing Megalith. And I don't think I played it exactly off the mobile, but I'm still learning this deck, but yeah, this is, showcase the power of this deck. Right, so I guess I'll show the other half of the, the incantation and level 4 Megalith combo, this time I'll start with using Hagif instead of Ophiel. So Prep will add Chalice Slime as well. So we'll start the combo with Chalice Slime as opposed to Pencil Plume. Then we'll use Chalice Slime, you can discard any card. We'll get rid of the, the, the Fool. And then Special Summon. Candle from decks. Make sure you special summon Candle this time. You always want Candle to be the first one you special summon. Then Candle. Then we'll add the Inception. Then you'll use Inception to special summon. We're, we're gonna do this combo starting with Hagif this time. So, get rid of the Candle. 
Then Haggith will search unformed. You need the unformed to start your combo this time. And this time you'll use unformed to special summon fool from deck, or ritual summon fool from deck using the Haggith you just uh, summoned. And then Fool will activate, will add you back your Hegif, and now you'll use Incantation Inception, pitching the Chalice Slime in hand, the special summon Talus Mandra, which will add back the Inception, then Talus Mandra will add you your Benten, and then using the Fool, Fool, you will special summon Ophiel from deck since you started with Hegev. So now you uh, you can use the Benten as the entire tribute. Then when Ophiel is summoned, you uh, use Ophiel and Benten to search for Manju. And... Manju and Och, respectively. And now you're at a point where this is the same as the last time. The only sequencing difference before, from before is you have to add Unformed with Hegev to spit the Fool from deck and then Fool, Fool special summons Ophio instead of summons, special summons Hegev. But now the... Now it's uh, relatively the same. So you will use... Inception the special summon Hegif using Talus Mandra. And this will get you your field spell. Activate your field spell. And now you will use your Hegif to ritual summon the Osh you searched off Ophiel. And now you will use Megalith Portal and Och. Och, you can just draw cards, it's whatever, and Portal will add back your Hegif. And, uh, these animations take quite a long time, so you're, be patient when you're playing this deck. Ooh, that's a, that's a nice card. Uh, we don't need this Ophio. Then you're gonna use Ophio's effect to Ritual Summon Hegif one last time. And this will get you your trap card, Emergence. So this is the same setup as before now, except you actually have the Arch already on the field, so you don't need to even use the Emergence to revive the Arch this time. You already have the Fool, the Fool, using itself and Manju to summon Bayfer from deck to pop, uh, to pop 2, or pop 3, since we actually discarded the Fool. And then you also have access to Arch to Special summon the Baron, the Baron is again. And also an extra unformed, just in case. Yeah. So... I, I will Ash that just to make this turn go by quicker. <laughs> Come on, AI. Yeah, set. Okay, yeah, and now use Fool to summon Bay 4 to pop. Bay 4 pop. And then Portal will, will add back your Benton. And after you add back Benton, you can use Och to ritual summon the Shino Baron Peacock in hand by using the Benton and the Och as material. So now you get the Shino Baron Peacock, and then Benton will trigger adding you your Manju as follow up, and you haven't even used your face down emergence yet to revive.
So yeah, that's uh, what you're trying to go for with this deck, these, uh, these two example combos. If you don't open with the incantation stuff, but you open another way to ritual summon, such as with the, a high level full megalith, such as using bait for to ritual summon your uh, lower level megalith directly, then you or you have to summon Man Mantu to get your combo going. Instead of searching sharing this peacock, Shino Bear and Peacock, you won't end on the Peacock, but you can still end on the standard like Fool to summon Bay for the pop uh, infinite still. Oh yeah, I, I hope uh, these combos were at least somewhat helpful. Alright, this next deck is uh, a lot simpler than the last one, Megalev. And this is just Yosenju. Now this is not a ritual deck, so if there are ritual missions that are required to ritual summon, obviously you can't use this for that, but after you completed them with the, like, you know, if you grind it through them with loners or with megalith and you just want to swap out to something easier and like less brain power involved, just go for this. Now this is a, this is a deck that only really, that has a really small engine, like only if we're running the best Yosenju cards and then the rest is non-engine, obviously, and then that could be up to whatever discretion you want. So the best you'll send you are comma one, comma two, comma three, and Isna. And then obviously all of these are Beast Warriors, so you gotta run three tanking in this deck. And how I mean if you don't if you've never seen Yosenju monsters before, I mean it's it's pretty simple. Basically, if you control you can just normal summon as many Yosenju monsters in your hand as you can, or as however many you have in your hand. And then they all gain effects based on the other Yosenju monsters on the field, basically. So, comma one is... Uh, if you control another Yosenju monster, you can target a face-up card your opponent controls and return to the hand. And... Car comma two can attack directly, and then... It, the, the battle damage is half, but the important thing is that it inflicts battle damage. So when it inflicts battle damage, that triggers comma three, and comma three... 3 lets you add a Yosenju card from your deck, so you can add any Yosenju monster or you can add one of the two spell and traps. A secret move is a counter trap that negates a spell or trap card. And Swords Thing is a is a double compulse, basically. If you control no no monsters, which you, you usually won't, because you know the other gimmick of Yosenju monsters, they all return to your hand on the end phase. And Yosenju is not as a you can Discard it to make your opponent unable to re respond to your essential normal special summon. But mainly the important part of Isna is that it's just a, it gets you another draw. So the idea is you just, you know, do blind segment this deck, obviously. This deck gains a lot of effects based on battle damage and, you know, does run board breakers as you can see here. And then you just summon as many essential monsters as you can and then you gain, you know, just. Just use their effects. You can just literally just click click buttons and it'll probably work in this deck. And as for non-engine, again, this is a, a budget deck, so literally, this isn't the exact non-engine that I would use. This is just the, like, signifies that you can literally use anything else. Any staples that you have to fill out the rest of the deck after those you send you cards. So, I'm throwing in, like, Ash, called by... Cross out Imperm, like these are staples since uh, most people have them already, so figure it's nice to put it in. Valor as a cross out target, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It, you don't have to run Valor, obviously. Uh, Nibiru is uh, from the bundle pack and helps go for game and stuff. Dark Hole is a super rare, and you're blinding second, so work there's are nice. And the one Regeki you get for free as well. Duster is a staple I think most people should already have. Lightning Storm is from a bundle. And then tactics and thrust again. I don't. I, again, I based. I don't know what the meta is going to look like. I don't know if these are good or not. If they're good, you can consider running more of these. If they're not, you can possibly cut these to other tech options. And pot is. It's kind of weird because it does conflict with the fact that you want to kill your opponent, and having your damage makes it like really hard to kill your opponent sometimes. And also, it conflicts with Isna. But honestly, you only had you. You had like fifteen starters, and you want to open multiple starters. The more stars you, you open, the better. So just having a pot that can dig for more more of your engine is nice. And yeah, there are... Again, the staples are just whatever the hell you own and whatever you want to put in. Doesn't quite matter. Anything 
should probably work. I do recommend running Kaijus though, because again, uh, Huli from the Mekong, like again, they're so hard to out Huli for so many decks. So there's having like a Gamma Suture deck just have to have a blanket out to like random BS or random towers, quote unquote towers like cards your opponent has is uh, pretty nice, especially since you can. Uh, Kaijus are nice with your synergy because you can bounce back your hand of comma one, so you have a reusable Kaiju as long as you draw one, so that's nice. Also, it's the first time you're gonna see me advertise you for playing the Floodgate, but uh, lose one turn. One on one legal Floodgates in this game, in this event. So, if you want, you can you can try out try out this card. Uh, <laughs> no special summon monsters can use their effect to turn their special summon. And then, if they if they can't if they're skill drained for a turn, then you can bounce them back with a comma one and keep keep looping back the rich monsters back to their hands. So they can't use their their shit. <laughs> uh, not quite sure how viable this this will be is, but I mean it, it's a super rare, so it's pretty inexpensive. You can give it a give it a try. Extra, extra this is the this egg, if you've noticed this extra deck is the exact same extra deck I used in every single deck I've shown across my two videos because it literally doesn't matter. Matter. And obviously, I guess I have to mention another budget option is playing one of the loners. Probably, I, this is the best one, Nuvo. I, I've been told. I don't know exactly how this works, to be honest, and I might never know how to play this deck properly because I don't have the URs to roll pull in this pack, but. If you learn how to play this loner, it's the best one. I don't. I don't think the other two loners are that great. Blue eyes. I have chaos max. I mean, sure, you might be able to cheese out some wins with chaos max, but I feel like a majority of decks are gonna have by just because Huli and Mekongo exist, they're just gonna have. They're just randomly have, gonna have out chaos max dragon already. So it's like your main win condition is still, you know, not, not not worth running. Sadly, this event. Possibly, and then liberals, and I mean, I, li li liberals. Am I right? Just get in, get in, get in the kitchen. Lab this deck out, or lab the megalith deck out. There's no, there's no penalty for losing and scrubbing out and like misplaying your ass off. You'll get it eventually, and yeah, complete those ritual summon, summon missions, and get get all those gems. And uh, if you if you do have some UR or if you do have own URs for some other ritual decks or URs from the previous pack, the one of the Gishkis and the Rescue Ace, which are, are both playable this event, or if you own Mikanko, uh, go check out the other video I made with a uh, deck list for uh, those decks.